Hello, this is your 10.19 tutorial. To begin, we'll start by clicking on the A and going to New. Make sure you load your McFadder template drawing. Mine is saved in my documents. Your location may vary. McFadder templates, McFadder ACAD. All right. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the grid so I don't have to see that. And then this next step I'm going to do, you do not have to do. I'm going to attach the image of the problem that we'll be working on today, 10.19. I'm adding it to the work area. All right. So now we're going to be doing a multi view of this drawing. I feel a good spot to start on this would be on the front view. Majority of the dimensions you'll notice are in a vertical fashion. So let's go ahead and do that. Looks like our overall distance is 4.35. So I'm gonna start a line from here going across. 4.35. And then our tallest height is 1.60. The thickness of this edge here is 0.4. I'm going to stop the line from there. I'm going to start on the other end again. Start a line command. And come up here at point four as well. I'm going to send that line across. I'm going to go all the way across past the drawing. I'm gonna bring another line. Oops. I'm gonna bring another line from this endpoint straight down. I'm gonna trim that out. Select these two lines as cutting planes, and then select, select, right click, enter. All right. So I got this basic little L shape. I'm gonna to have to add this circle in next. From this side here, going over is two inches to the center. This is in line with the center line of the object. So I want to go from that end over two. And this line I'm going to draw directly on top of the other line at a distance of two. Once I get to the end of that line, I'm just going to draw the line either going down or up, doesn't matter which way. I'm gonna go down in this case. But this tells me where the reference line is. I can highlight across and see where that line exists. Um, matter of fact, I can go actually delete this line now because I don't need it in the final product. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is my circle. I have a distance from the opening of the circle to the opposite opening of the circle, and a marker here indicating that it's a radius. So that means that the opening here is the same distance as, well, half of it is the distance of the radius, okay? So instead of them putting in the half of 1.5, they gave us a diameter dimension, but because it's not a full circle, they couldn't list it as a diameter. So they're just letting you know what the opening is of that piece and that it is a perfect radius by notating that it's a radius. All right, so what I'm gonna do with that is I'm just gonna do a circle diameter. I'm gonna put it right at the end of that line right there and type in 
0.5. And then I get my circle. From there, I can use the trim command. Selecting the bottom line as a cutting plane, right click, and then cut away at that extra line. Now I'm left with just my arc. The other arc has a dimension of a radius of 1.15. So I can draw that radius in now. Go ahead and use the circle command, use radius. And then I'm going to go ahead and dimension the radius at 1.15. Okay, now the big difference of why you'll see that they measure from here to here is because these are going to the quadrants. Where this circle, if they were measured here to here, it wouldn't be the same distance. So they had to give a radial dimension for that. Let's go ahead and do the trim. Select the top as my cutting plane, and I'm gonna cut the rest of the circle away. So now I can see both the arcs here and here. I'll go ahead and use the trim command and use the bottom arc to cut the bottom line. And then I'll repeat trim, selecting the top arc to cut the top line. And now I can go ahead and get rid of my guideline. So now that arc is in place. Now there's a couple of details from this view that I cannot do. Okay, so let's continue with this. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and start with the top view. Um, you know what a good thing we should do is uh, save our drawing right now. Let's go ahead and hit the save button. Now, your location may vary where you're gonna save yours. I recommend putting it in a folder with all the other uh, chapter 10 drawings. But we will call it, excuse me, 10.19 and save it. It's always good to have a save file before uh, completing the drawing, just in case you end up having a power outage or something, you don't lose all your work. Now, I believe I was saying that we may have uh, some information here that we can't see or get just yet, that we're gonna have to do the next view before we can get that information. If we do enough math, we can figure it out, but it's just so much easier to just work another view, get it done there, and then come back to it. So for this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna project some line work going to the top view. And I'll use the copy command. Let's go copy. And any points of interest, I uh, will copy up. Let's copy one more line. And also bring the center. Now, so I don't get too confused, I'm gonna select this line type here and change it to a center line. And because I'm doing a top view, I know that these lines here that are being projected from the bottom are gonna be hidden lines. So I'm gonna select them and change those to hidden as well. I'm ready to start my top view. I'll pick a location to begin my first line, about here. The thickness of the top view is 1.9. So I'll select that line and I'll copy it up. 1.9, oops, that's a six, let's make it a nine. 
and I'll hit enter. So that line is now in place. I'm still in the copy command. I'm noticing that I have another dimension right here. Let's go ahead and get that out of the way. From here to there is the center of this hole. Which also lines up with the center of this hole. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in. And that dimension is 0.95. So 0.95. And since it is a center line, I'm going to make sure that I select that line and change it to a center line type, just so I don't forget. All right, what do I got here next? We have some edges for the circles coming in here at 0.5. And these are two times. So they're both going to be at their locations. And I have the distance here of 0.9 to the center. So what will be actually be the easiest thing to do, and we'll close off our box that we have here. I'm going to go ahead and do the trim command. Selecting this line as a cutting plane to cut off these little extra bits because they are the ends. Then I'll use the trim command to select this line and this line here. And I'm going to go ahead and remove all the extra bits on this side. I might as well go ahead and get rid of the other side as well. I'll keep the other lines for reference for now, but eventually I will be trimming those out. All right, and on this corner, I need to round these edges. We can see here that we have a radius of 0.5, and the distance from here to the center is also 0.5, so that means that it's an exact quadrant, a quarter of the circle. So if I use the fillet command, fillet, I can set the radius, the radius here, R, to 0.5. And with that said, I can select this line and this line here, and I can get that perfect radius in there. And I'll right click, repeat fill it, select this line and this line here, and there goes my radiuses. This will also serve as a good location for the centers of these circles. They're 0.5 diameter circles, and there are two of them. So let's put those in. Diameter. And to find the center, I like to do is I like to touch the circle and then move my mouse to the center. And then I'll type in my diameter is 0.4, enter. All right. There's two of them, so I'm going to select that circle I just drew. I'm going to use the copy command, pick it from that center, and move it to the center of this circle. Notice how I went to the circle first, found my center point. Right click, enter. Now those are placed. Now, this is the reason why, instead of doing all the work here, trying to figure out where they are, because now I can go ahead and change my line type here to a hidden line. And I could just easily go from the quadrants and project those down. And then trim them out using these two cutting planes to cut and cut. And there it goes. And just like how I did this right here, I can do the same thing here with this cylinder. I know these ends are gonna go in from here to there to be the top. And I know the bottom is gonna go from here all the way back. So I can trim those out accordingly. All right, so that top part is done there. And this last line I have here, it's gonna be this line run across. 
So I'm going to trim that as well. And since I don't no longer need these things on the end, I'll use this as a cutting plane as well to cut away all the extra lines I no longer need. All right, so let's go ahead and put that hole that's in the top. We have a 0.12 diameter hole. So let's go ahead and use a diameter circle at the intersection of these two center lines. And it is 0.2. Now this came out as a hidden line because my line type is set to that right now. So I'm going to fix that and make it layer zero for now. I'm eventually gonna have to go back and change all these layer zero lines to object layers. Matter of fact, while we're thinking about it, let's go ahead and do that for now. Notice how I do my crossing windows, selecting from my right to left either upwards or downwards to select with my crossing window. It's a good habit to get into to avoid selecting certain line types. After I've made sure I've selected all my lines, I will change them all to object. All right. The last thing I need is a cut that's in here from this radius. I have a dimension here at 0.5. It's a circle. So I can go ahead and offset this here at 0.25. Offset command. 0.25, enter. Selecting the center line and going up, selecting the center line and going down, right click, enter. Then I use a linear dimension to check from here to here. Should be 0.5, looks good. I'll go ahead and erase the dimension and only the dimension. Notice that I didn't try and cover over these. I don't want to get rid of those just yet. I'm also going to change my line type to layer zero to make sure I don't keep drawing hidden lines everywhere. All right. So now that I have these lines here, I know this one and this one is going to be a solid line. So I'll just make it object. And the only distance they actually need is in between these two lines here. So I'll use the trim command, selecting these two lines to cut away at this line, at this line, this line and this line. All right. Now what I'm going to do just for a placeholder. I'll go ahead and use the offset command again. I'll leave it at the point 25 for now and just offset out. 0.25 on each side. I'll use those two lines that I just created and trim, cutting the center line. It's a little short for the break. I can fix that a little bit. Let's do a center line. Just draw it out here. And there we go. See, I can just go just far enough to get that little bit of pop. And I could take that line from the midpoint and move it on top of the midpoint of that line. And you can very faintly see the extra line. It's a little bit thicker. I'm going to use the crossing window from left to right, which is blue. And notice that I missed the very beginning end of this line right here. I did that intentionally to make sure I can get the line that's underneath it. And then I can hit delete button. And there we go, a nice center line going across here, indicating that this is a circle. 
I can go ahead and delete this center line completely. So I'm not going to be using that. I can also annotate my center marks for a center line here, 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 and the big circle as well. Now in the drawing, you can see how they modified the center mark a little bit. Let's actually change this in properties. to a hmm. it's not giving me the option to change problem with that it is off right now so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna delete that ain't worth my trouble when we dimension, we'll go ahead and fix that. All right, so escape. So fix that and go here. And where it says center mark or center line, well, the center mark, it's set to center line. I'm going to change it to center mark. And that gives me the mark that I want. Okay. So that's how that's adjusted. All right. I think we have everything we need in the top view. We got the hole, got the break. Let's go ahead and start on the side view. What I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna take a copy of this drawing here and move it. I can move it pretty much anywhere to bring it across. Then I'm gonna select it and rotate it from here straight down. Is it from zero? To down and just so it's not so far away I'm gonna move this over just a bit to here all right and then we will get started with our front view or excuse me, our side view by projecting our line work across here. So let's project our line work across. I get the end point, very important. Let's get this out of the way. I don't need that button anymore. Okay. I'm going to start with the outer limit here, it's just a basic square shape. So we have here in the very front, then I will project the other information afterwards. So let me just get this right hand side started. Selecting all the items for trimming. So I can do my crossing windows to cut away. And then I'll change this to object.
All right, so some things I cannot project is going to be the fillets that are on this edge here. They're a radius of 25. So let's go ahead and do a fillet. Radius, R. At, excuse me, point 0.25. Got the hiccups. All right, with that set, select this line and this line here. There's the first point twenty-five. repeat fill it. This one and this one here. Notice that I didn't type it in again because I can repeat a fillet. I have the escape key. So I got the edges taken care of. And then this point 0.5 in here in the middle, we're gonna come from these here. So now I'll project those down. I'm just going to go across. And then on this view, I have a height going up of one. So I'll select this line and copy. Moving this up one. This is to the center of the circle. So I'll change this line type to a center line type. And this is in the middle. I can project this center line coming across, but I do already know that this is a midpoint right here between this line that I have copied from the bottom up. So I'll just get this out of the way for now. And then I'm gonna use that midpoint for that line as the center of my circle. Notice that it's the radius again, just like it was here. So for this one, which is gonna be really neat, is if you have a points of reference you could use, you can go ahead and click the radius tool and go from the midpoint to the end point of the line. And that set that rate at that diameter that was given from open end to open end, that 0.5, and did half of it, which is 0.25. But we didn't have to type in any of those numbers because we projected the line work from here already. We did the 0.25 here. So they're able to reuse information available to us. That's one of the big strong points of projecting line work. So let's go ahead and trim this out now. I'm gonna use the circle and the top line as cutting planes. I'll cut the top projection and the parts underneath the circle. I click enter. Then I'll use the center line as a cutting plane to trim the circle above. And I'm gonna select these two lines and use them as a trim to cut the upper part of this piece here, giving us the shape that we need here for this very front of the right hand side view. All right, I'm gonna take this center line out and then I'm gonna change these three, well two lines in an arc to object. The escape key. All right, so we're all set here with this. Now we need to get the missing information that we do not have here from the other drawings. One thing we do need to project from here to this drawing is the depth of that center line, of the hidden line. So let's change our line type to hidden. Project a line from the quadrant straight across. And I'll use the trim command using these two lines as cutting planes and cut this and this here. I'm going to eventually need to put a center line in, but we'll save that for a little bit later. Let's go ahead and start getting some of this object information brought over. So, <clears throat> 
I change my line type back to zero. So I have the top of this cylinder, which is going to come across. But because we have a hole cut here, we're going to see a portion of this right here as an object line. And then on this side and that side there, those will be hidden lines. So I'll change this to hidden for now. And then what I'll do is I'll use the trim command. Select these two lines to cut this line out. Now I did say I need a solid line here. So what I'll do is I'll go back in, change my line to object, and then draw a line from this endpoint to this endpoint here. Hit the escape key. And now I have the top edge of that arc visible through the hole of this little slot. All right. Now I'll use the trim command with this edge and this edge here to cut away at those hidden lines. And then I will project my next line type. Hidden. This will be completely under and out of any view. So I'll project that across. And looking at this, I'm noticing that I'm missing information here. So I'm gonna project the quadrant of this hole coming down. And the quadrant of this hole coming down. Now this is a circle cut into a cylinder. So you're gonna notice some very interesting results from this. Let me go ahead and trim that. Cut this away and cut this away. What you can notice is that the quadrant is here, but the cylinder that cut into that round edge has a different stopping point. It goes a little further down, okay? At this point in time, we're not gonna worry about that kind of detail work. We're just gonna put the hidden lines in. But at later times, you may end up having to show a three-point arc that comes across, showing fillets and things of that nature, or excuse me, uh, ellipses. And for now, we're just simplifying this drawing. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim this out, this edge and this edge here. And then I need that same hole that I have here, visible on this side. Oops. Hit the pan button by accident. Go ahead and bring this down. And there's the hidden line for the hole going through. I need some more hidden lines. I need to bring this line here across. And that hidden line counts for this, this, and that in the back which will bring me to these holes that are further back. Let's project those. All right, so now those holes exist only in between these two lines here, which is the bottom and that hidden line. So I'm gonna select those two lines as my cutting plane. I'm gonna use the trim command. Cut those and cut these. Top of the circle. These. 
All right, looking good. Now we'll just go through, put it in our center lines. So this center of the mark will count for this and it'll count for this, the cylinder coming down. I'm gonna draw a line I'm here going down so I get my nice clean pop. Once I've made that, I'll draw a line from here to here, creating a center point. I can then go ahead and use the midpoint of this to the midpoint of that. And then I'll bleep the extra line. And since this is the same as the other three visible holes, I'll use the copy command to place here, here, and the third visible one is here. Even though this is two holes on this view, you only see it as one cylinder. All right, got that taken care of, got that taken care of. We can't see a center line going through here, so the object line takes priority, so we won't worry about that. We already can show our center line here, center mark. We will need a center line here. So what I'm gonna do is gonna project a line coming across. Then I'll use the trim command. Selecting these two edges to cut away. That leaves me the center line. Then I'll draw a new center line from here. Going across, I get my nice clean pop. And then I'll grab that midpoint and put it on the midpoint of this line. It's here key. And then I'm gonna use the crossing window from left to right to select only that line. And I'll hit delete. I see anything on the top view here? No, I don't think so. So I will take that all out. All right, now that we have this side view done, let's go ahead and save our drawing. I'm going to change this to annotate. Center line through here. So let's just draw one in. Just drawing it off the side, just because I'm coming through it and I don't want to avoid any snap points. Um, and then I'm going to use the two midpoints of these lines here, going straight across, to find the midpoint where I'm going to put this line. And then I'll delete the extra. Leaving my center line. All right, all set. Now we can go ahead and annotate. Let's go ahead and check our scale. So here at one to one, on an A size sheet, we're looking a little tight. Um, I could move this over just a hair. Make sure ortho's on. Don't move too close because you need to put some dimensions in. I'll try the best of my ability to center it the best I can. You will hit the center scroll button twice because it will be easy for you because you won't have the extra drawing in the way. And I'm going to change my scale to one to one. And that kind of fits. We'll do some dimensions. If we don't, we can switch over to the 11 by 17. And that one, we have a lot more room available to us. So make sure that's a one to one. Yes, it is. That already looks a lot better at that location. All right. Let's see what our dimensions look like because we will be doing this at one to one. We can start putting our dimensions in. 
All right. So we have dimension from the holes. From the end to the center. Let's make sure this is on our inner layer. Hit escape. Make sure our line type is anno. And we'll continue to linear dimension from here to here. Let's check our places. Placement. We're at two decimal place on uh, looks like all of the drawing. So right now, by default on the template, it's set to three places. We're going to want to change that. So let's go ahead and change it now. D I M style. You can either type in style or click the little style abbreviation here. Go ahead and modify. And in here, we're going to change our precision, which is in primary units on this tab, to two places. Hit OK. And close. Now these have been reduced down to two decimal places to match the drawing as presented. All right. Give some more dimensions here. The overall here. And the opening of the hole. And we'll complete the height as visible here. with a dimension from here to the center line. And bring a dimension across here. All right, we need to get to the location on this hole. Give the overall first. And then to the center. Don't really have too much of an option to show the depth of that hole from front end to back. So this is gonna be one of the few cases where we're gonna dimension it on the face. I could try pulling across, but when I start dimensioning these holes, it'll be not so as clean. So I'll go ahead and put those in. This one is gonna be wanting to go down here to here. That way it's on the outside. And then from here, oops. To here. Line that up. And we have our overall on the other side, so we don't need any more dimensions. On that side, we do need our radius. So what we'll do is we'll do a radius dimension right here. And we'll do a dimension for the diameter. So I'll click diameter and click on this circle here. Place it accordingly. 
Uh, we do not need the center points, so we'll select these two dimensions and go to our properties and change our center mark, which is set to line to none. And then we need to add the text so we know that these are two holes and these are two radiuses. So we'll double click on the text, type in two capital X space, click away from that. Then we'll click on this one and we'll put in two capital X and click away from that. All right, so now we have those two in. Let's go ahead and close up the properties. <clears throat> this is a little bit murky, but we're gonna bring this in with a radius. It points at this and pull it across. We do not need properties, the center mark. So we're gonna change the none. And we're also gonna go in and close properties. Edit this radius and just type in R. And we'll delete the text. So delete, and that leaves us with just the R. Okay. Uh, that's good, that's good. We need another R here. Double-click on that. R. We can do right arrow and then backspace. And then click away. That puts the radius in there. All right. Do the whole dimension here. This is a... 20 diameter through. So we'll do the diameter dimension. Click on that circle and pull it down this way. Key it out of the way to dress the drawing. These things we got to modify. Our center mark to none. And what we can do here is double click on that twice. We need it to say 0.20, that's good. Got going to the right arrow. And I'll put in the space through. T H R U. And click away from that. So now we know that, that hole goes all the way through. Right, let me close this out. Take a look. See if we're missing anything. We need a thickness here. We need a thickness here. Lines are covered. This is covered. 
location of the slot is covered. This of it is covered. Radius of the fillets. Let's go ahead and put that in. So I'll go to radius. Place it in. And let me put it on this side. Radius. Place it right here. Now I'm going to go click on the properties. And change to no center mark. All right, looks good. Let's close that out. So we got our radius here. All right, that's For that hole, even though it's on the bottom, we're going on the top. We don't have any distractions on it, so it looks a little cleaner. All right, so let's take a look and see if it looks good on our sheet. So, kind of twice and pan it over. And we just get the fit. Now, we're going to go ahead and, and go with this for now. If Mr. Regis does tell you that he wants it on a different size sheet, you can go ahead and go to your 11 by 17 very quickly since you have your drawing saved. And you'll be able to just print your document here, just center it. And all the dimensions and everything will be all the same. Just go ahead and either on either sheet, you'll go ahead and put in your sheet one of one, the project's name, scale the drawing, drawn by, and your date. Once you're complete with that, save your drawing. And then we'll go to print. From here, continue the single sheet. And then on your plot, you'll be able to say name, drawing to PDF and your style will be monochrome. Go ahead and we'll preview the drawing. Get a last second look at our drawing before we turn it in. Then if everything's all good, we exit it. And then once you're done making any corrections that need to be made, you can hit the OK button. It'll print, it'll go to a PDF. Save the PDF where you save all the rest of your work before you turn it in. And this has been your 10.19 tutorial, and I'll see you in the classroom. Bye-bye.